Okay, we're rolling. So, Tony, can you explain your writing process to me? What's your creative process? How do you sit down to write? Well, I, I always sit down early morning. Um, all of my writing is done early morning, so I have a very um, ritualistic habit to write early, and um, I get most work done probably between the hours about six in the morning and nine o'clock in the morning, and certainly wouldn't write after lunchtime. I tend to write about um, 1,500 words a day if I'm writing, and then I will begin the next day of writing by reading over what I've read. And then I'll do some editing after I finish, if it's a novel, um, a chapter or a large scene. If it's a short story, I'll often do the whole story and then I'll do a re-edit of the story. Great. You're known for your gritty realism mm -hmm. style. Where do you get your stories from? Uh, mostly observation. Um, my first book, Shadow Boxing, was quite autobiographical, so that was based on family and personal experience. But most of what I've done since, it's based on something that I will see and make note of. Um, I actually clip newspaper articles. Sometimes I'll read something interesting in the paper. I don't know where it will fit into a story. Um, I got up here this morning and the first item on the news radio said there was a wedding here last night in South Hobart and the bride ended up in hospital with um, alcoholic poisoning and the groom and the um, best man are in custody at the moment. So I wrote that down. Um, that might make the basis of a story one day. So generally I'm a bit of a bowbird, picking up scraps and bits and pieces. Or I do what I call framing, so I have an idea in my head at the moment based on walking home recently and seeing two boys play um, basketball under a, a hoop in the park and I just love the scene and I actually imagine it as the end of a story but I still don't know what will come before it. So mostly it's about observation. Sure. So your youth was quite varied. You ranged from being a top achieving student and an altar boy to going completely off the rails at one point. Mm -hmm. How did you make that transition into becoming a writer? Oh, mostly through reading. Um, I'm a, a very strong reader and I've always been a reader so that from a young age I, I enjoyed the public library and always borrowed books. So even when I wasn't at school I was doing a lot of um, reading and reading is still my first love in the sense of regarding literature. So I think that it comes from that, but it is also, I think, any writer that is successful or interested in writing over a long period, it is about, I think, that combination of an insatiable sense of curiosity, um, observational skills, and then I suppose some need to, to put that into um, some sort of meaning, and for me the meaning is by doing that with words. Great. And finally, Tony, what advice do you have for budding writers? Um, it's interesting because you know, most budding writers never become writers, but we don't know who are the, which of those will be successful. So I would never dissuade anyone from continuing the process. Um, I teach students who sometimes, the students who don't seem to be most likely to become writers when I first meet them, in fact, become the more successful of the students. I just think it is what anyone else would ask, that you keep at it. Um, that you're a bit stubborn about your writing in some ways. I mean, it's important to take advice, but also about having a sense of what you want to achieve and sticking to it. And not being um, persuaded by the marketplace. In other words, don't try and write a book based on the fact that a similar book was very successful last year, I should do this, I should do that. That may, may be the reason I'll get published. You've got to be true to the writing and true to the story that you're writing. And if you do that, you'll eventually be successful or you'll, you might find out you're not a, a writer. But, I mean, that's just the way it is. I, I think people, if they want to write and don't succeed, get quite demoralised at times. But I, and I understand that. But, yeah, there are many things that I sometimes have felt I'd like to do, but the fact is I can't do them because I'm no good at them. And, you know, maybe, you know, um, it's quite interesting even if you talk to novelists. I talk to novelists who can't imagine writing a short story and don't feel they have the capability. They're writers, but very particular writers. So that there are things that I enjoy. I love photography, but I know I don't have the technique or the artistic um, essentials to become a photographer. So it's just, that's life. Thank you very much.